Right, welcome back to Kinds of Data. This is part two, and we are going to cover primary and secondary data. Don't worry if you missed part one, you don't need it to understand this video, but you should definitely go back and watch it because you will need it for the general psychology syllabus. I put the link to part one in the description section below so you can check it out when you're ready. Right, let's make a start. So, so primary data refers to original data that has been collected by the researcher specifically for that study. So it's data that is collected first hand from the participants themselves. Okay, so you get primary data through experiments or through questionnaires or through observations where the data is collected there and then from the participants by the researcher. Okay, it is first hand data. Whereas secondary data, on the other hand, is data that's been collected by someone else other than the person conducting the research. So essentially, it's data that already exists, and it's data that's already been examined for its significance and for its validity. So examples are things like journal articles or books and websites, um, government reports such as population reports or employee absence, absence records within an organisation. All of those class as secondary data because they are data because it's information that's been collected by somebody else and that already exists, but I could probably use for my research, depending on what the research is. Now, a particular type of secondary data is something called a meta-analysis. And you guys have actually already come across one meta-analysis already, and that was the meta-analysis on cross-cultural variations in attachment conducted by Van Eisendorn and Cronenberg. So if you remember, they used 32 studies that had been conducted over eight different countries. They didn't conduct the studies themselves. Those studies had been conducted by researchers in those countries. Van Eisendorn and Cronenberg simply took the results from those individual pieces of research and then drew their own conclusions from this big spread of data that they took from other researchers. Okay, so that is a meta-analysis. Right, so let's have a look at a few pros and cons of primary and secondary data. So the obvious strength of primary data is that it is authentic data. Okay, so it's data that is collected with the sole purpose of being used in a specific investigation. That means that it is designed to target the information that's required, and that also gives the researcher a high level of control about how the data is collected. Okay, so that means that less time is going to be wasted potentially on irrelevant data or data that isn't going to be useful. That being said, it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to set up your own study and collect your own data. You know, you need to make your resources, you need to think of your questions, you need to get your participants and so on and so on. So it, it takes time, it takes a lot of effort and it is also very expensive. So because of that, using secondary data, which already exists, could save the researcher a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of money. Secondary data, on the other hand, is, as I've just said, much less time-consuming and much less expensive to collect. So that means that researchers can find the information that they need with very, very little effort, which overall makes the collection and use of secondary data much easier when compared with primary data. Okay, and a limitation, however, is that secondary data often throws up a lot of concerns over accuracy. That's because there's a lot of variation in the quality of the data that's being collected. For example, data might seem okay at first, but then could turn out to be incomplete or outdated or just not useful, which means that it's possible that a lot of the data may turn out to be of very little or of no value to the researchers. Okay, which is then obviously bad because you've wasted a lot of time collecting all of your secondary data. Okay, so those are just a couple of strengths and limitations of these two types of data. So before we finish off, we're just going to have a quick look at what this could look like in an actual exam. So your first question here is a bit of an identify and explain, and it's really, really simple. They just want you to explain 
why the data um, in the table is primary data and not secondary data. And it's really simple. You just have to use the question or the information above to point out that the data is being collected firsthand by the researcher. You can use the information that's in the stem to help you, but it's only two marks, so you don't need to go into too much detail for that. And then part B to that is also just a generic evaluation question, explain one strength of primary data. And it is worth three marks, so just be aware that you'll need to name um, an evaluation point or you'll need to name a strength, but you'll also need to explain why it's a strength. It also wouldn't hurt to link it to the stem if you can in some way, just to tie it all together. Another exam question could be referring to the investigation, explain the difference between primary and secondary data. So again, that is a fairly standard question. You just need to explain what primary data is and what secondary data is and kind of focus on the difference between the two, i.e. one is collected firsthand and one already exists. However, you do also need to refer to the investigation. So you must definitely pick out the fact that the researcher looks at information in the offender's court and prison reports. That will be secondary data um, and that she asks them to describe their family and early childhood. That would be your primary data. Okay, so you must refer to the investigation, you must link your answer to the information that you're being given. And then a final question is um, a nice big one, but it's not that hard. So identify one type of data that the psychologist collected in the study, explain your answer. So it's fairly common, you get a nice big investigation, lots of information, and also more than one type of data in there. You just need to pick one out and explain why what you've picked out is... Um, is the type of data that you say that it is. So you could say that she interviewed witnesses separately in a quiet room and asked them the same closed question about what they had seen. So there you've got primary data because she's conducting the interviews, but you've also got quantitative data because she's asking them closed questions. Okay, so that's the kind of way that you um, would go at this question, but obviously you only need one example. Right, and that is the end of the video. Remember to check out part one on qualitative and quantitative data, which I have linked in the description section below. And if you have any questions, then pop them in the comments section and I'll do my best to get back to you ASAP. I hope it's all made sense and thanks very much for listening.